everything old is new again, which I don't mean in the Kirby Ferguson slash Arthur C. Danto sense that everything is a remix or all of the new ideas have been had and so we are left to just endlessly recombine the set of things which already exist, though that doesn't mean that we're not. I mean it slightly more literally. Old things are being turned into new things a lot. And this has inspired suspicion in some, disappointment in others, and confusion in the wondering many. Why are there so many remakes? Movies, video games, television shows, comic books, even some music and people, you name it, and it's being updated from its yester form and repackaged for a now audience. And not just new entries into old series, but also and maybe mostly reboots and reimaginings, continuations and new beginnings for older properties. More and more, it feels like the past is coming back to haunt the box office. Pac-Man's a bad guy? Let's be totally clear here that remaking things is not some uniquely modern practice, but using Wikipedia's list of remade films as a reference, so get your statistical grains of salt ready, the 10 years since 1980 with the most remakes are all between 2002 and 2011. The droid you're looking for put together this awesome infographic about the recent economic situation with regards to remakes, and I think it strikes right to the practical heart of the matter. Why remakes? They're profitable. They come with a built-in storyboard format or arc, names, reputations, and most importantly, audience. Low cost, high return. Plus, as Johanna Desta at Mashable points out, even if originals tank, remakes can still be wildly profitable, particularly in international markets. Remakes also mean that producers don't have to license new IP. They can use for free or cheap whatever's just laying around. Like Spider-Man. Chillin' in a box somewhere. But okay, the practical reason, dollars, doesn't happen for no reason. For all of the complaining that we've reached overload on this flood of damn remakes and sequels, if audiences were actually frustrated or bored, the powers that be would stop making them because they'd be bad for business. So the economics are the how, but really only half of the why. The other half of the why is why, amid apparent frustration, audiences continue to throw their bottle caps at reboots. One explanation has been offered by the preeminent media theorist of our time, Simon Pegg. In a blog post, he writes, the children of the 70s and 80s were the first generation for whom it wasn't imperative to grow up immediately after leaving school. This extended adolescence has been cannily co-opted by market forces. Suddenly, here was an entire generation crying out for an evolved version of the things that they were consuming as children. This demographic is now well and truly serviced in all facets of entertainment and the first and second childhoods have merged into a mainstream phenomenon. To say my generation is crying out for remakes is a bit of an overstatement, but I think it's fair to say we are supportive of them. We're adults now, have disposable income, and had childhoods that allow us to and are fun to look back on, unlike previous generations. We're very lucky in that regard. Peg even references perennial sourpuss Jean Baudrillard and his concept that more information with less meaning might be entertaining, but ultimately distances us from what is real, which is a concept that we talked about in our Orphan Black video. If someone forced me to get Baudrillardian, I might argue that our apparent support of media which returns to the well belies a collective narcissism, because remakes allude on some level to a younger, less complicated past of that we can show off. It's not nostalgia because I really don't think it's about wanting to go back. It's about wanting to conspicuously advertise some connection we have to past media. Anyway, I like Simon Pegg's idea. I think it's provocative and it's also awesome to see Scotty flex his postmodern theory muscles, but I think there is another aspect to the recent surge in remakes. Heck, there are probably dozens, but I want to talk about one. So, in the late 40s, these two guys, Theodore Adorno and Max Horkheimer, griped and groaned about what they called the culture industry. You see, before the infection by capitalism, creative endeavors were meaningful works of art, but in the face of capital, they became commodities, and this ruined everything and made Theo and the Horks sad. Movies and radio, they wrote, need no longer pretend to be art. The truth that they are a business is made into an ideology in order to justify the rubbish that they deliberately produce. 
crankiness. And to think they were writing before reality TV and native advertising, they would be so pissed today. Or maybe excited that a growing media ecosystem provides ever more people with the ability to create and distribute meaningful works of culture without having to involve massive production entities. New distribution methods, direct-to-artist payment, new forms, animated GIFs. Still can't escape capital, though. Hmm. Anyway, I think one could argue that Gen Xers and maybe early millennials were the first to experience culture initially or primarily as that industry that Adorno and Horkheimer so bemoaned. For lots and lots of us, endless duplication and wide distribution is synonymous with our experience of culture in a way that it wasn't for our parents or their parents. And I don't just mean copying VHS tapes or taping music off of the radio, trading or downloading MP MP3s or movies. I mean duplication like mass industrial duplication, which got media, toys, food, and clothes onto shelves and into our homes. Baked into so much of the culture that we are remaking today is the very idea that it is always already remade. It came to us originally through a process of industrial technological duplication. Reduplication. Adorno and Horkheimer called this one too. They said that capital was able to triumph because of the technology of duplication. Culture, they said, is made the way it is, not because that's what can or should be made, but because that is what is capable of being made by available methods of production copyable, repeatable, made profitable. And what really is a remake, if not a duplication of some kind? As more things are made, there will be more things to remake, and more of those remakeable things will bear on them some mark that remaking is warranted, because they are products of a cultural moment where duplication, mass production, remaking is endemic to the conditions of creation in the same way it is for, say, industrial goods. We don't complain about the endless remaking of light bulbs because that is the idea of light bulbs, and I'm maybe arguing that it is also increasingly the idea of popular culture. Adorno and Horkheimer, and to a certain degree we, perceive a lazy unity of things always made the same. But as Simon Pegg suggests, there is also a comfort in it. Not, I don't think, because we want to be children again, but because it feels right, or maybe not right, but expected, compulsory even. Now who do I see about another Dune remake? What do you guys think? Why are there so many remakes? Let us know in the comments, and accept no duplications, subscribe to Idea Channel. Okay, so because we have two weeks worth of comment responses to do, we're gonna try something a little bit different, and we uploaded comment responses for the Do We Live in the Future and the Button episode as their own video. Uh, if you got to this video from any social media like, you know, Twitter, Facebook, or the subreddit, um, you should be in a playlist, which you should see right here, and you don't have to do anything in a second. It will just go over to the next video. Uh, if you haven't, then we'll put a card or an annotation somewhere around here for you to click to go to. But before you do that, before it happens, uh, just a couple bits of news. I'm gonna be at GeekyCon um, this summer, which I am super excited about. So anybody who will be at GeekyCon, let's hang out. And we are gonna be taking next week off. So the next time you see me, uh, it will not be next week, but the week after that if you don't count the comment responses video that, if you're in the playlist, will start now-ish.